Functions are essentially blocks of code that you can repeat or call as many times as you want. For example, we could turn a print statement into a function that we could then call later on in our game. So how do we actually do this? Well, you're going to start out by writing function, and this will tell the script that you are writing a new function. Then you have to give your function a name. I'm just going to call mine my function. Once you drop a line, it'll create this end. So anything in between function and this end is part of your function. Now inside of this in between is what the function is actually going to do. So we could say print hello, and we could actually add as many lines of code as we want. So we could even have a variable and set it equal to one. And then we could print the variable and then we could change the variable to five and print variable again. So now whenever we call this function, it will go through this in order. It'll print hello, set a variable to one, print that variable, set the variable to five and print the new variable. But here's the thing, if we run the game, you'll notice nothing actually happens, and that's because we haven't called the function. So just like we could say print down here, we can call our function to tell the script that we want to do it. The way you do that is by typing the name of your function followed by two parentheses. This is essentially telling the script, hey, look up in the script to find my function and then do whatever is inside of it. That's what this line is doing. So now if we hit run, you should see hello, one and five because it prints hello one then five now the cool thing about functions is you can call them as many times as you want so we could call my function a ton of different times and it would all run over and over and over you could see hello one five hello one five hello one five and it just ran four different times now within functions we can pass through what are called parameters and you can think of those as basically variables for the function so how could we use that practically? Well, let's create a calculator function. We can say function calculate. Remember, this is just like this one up here. We're just creating a brand new function called calculate. Now we're going to have a few different modes. One mode is going to be addition, one's going to be subtraction, one's going to be multiplication, and one's going to be division. So there are going to be four modes. Now to use this practically, let's pass through the mode that we would like to use as a parameter. So the way you use parameters is by placing them inside of these parentheses and we can just say mode. Then we can say if mode equals equals one then so if the mode we passed through was the first mode well then that's going to be addition. So for testing let's just go ahead and print addition. Then we can say else if mode equals equals two then well we can print subtraction because our second mode is subtraction. Let's do the same for multiplication. If the mode is three, well then we know we're trying to multiply. Multiplication. Else if mode equals equals four, then we can say print division. So now we have all these different modes that we can call. Mode one will be addition, mode two will be subtraction, mode three will be multiplication, and mode four will be division. So how do we actually call this and supply a mode? Well, just like we called my function earlier, we can call the function calculate, but this time it's going to prompt us to put a mode in. So whatever we type inside of these parentheses, for example, if I type two, well, it'll pass through two as the mode of the function. So basically it's saying, hey, we want to calculate, but mode is equal to two. So if mode is equal to two, well, we've checked to see what mode is and it's going to do and it's going to print subtraction. So let's go ahead and click run. Now you can see that subtraction has been printed because we passed through a parameter of two. And this mode variable was automatically set to whatever we passed in. Now let's make this even cooler. We can pass through multiple different parameters, not just one. So let's pass through two different numbers that we want to do the math with. The way we pass multiple parameters is by adding commas to separate them. So we can say mode comma number one comma number two. So now whenever we call this calculate function, we're going to want to pass in a number one and a number two as well. And it's the same way when we call it, we can just add commas to separate them. So let's pass through 25 as number one and 20 as number two. Now instead of printing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, let's actually do that. So if mode is one, then we want to print number one plus number two. Because this is our addition mode, we want to add these two numbers and print the result. Otherwise, if mode is 2, then we want to subtract the numbers. So let's subtract number 1 and number 2. If it's multiplication, well, let's multiply the numbers. So we can print number 1 times number 2. 
Finally, if it's division, we want to divide the numbers. So we can say print number one divided by number two. So remember, we've passed through the mode is two, which is subtraction, and we've passed through 25 as the first number and 20 as the second number. So what this should do is it should find mode two is subtraction, then it's going to print number one, which is 25, minus number two, which is 20, so it should print five. Now if we take a look at our output when running it, it prints five. Just what we expected. And if we wanted to, we could change the mode to 3, and now it'll multiply, and we'll get 500. Or we could change the mode to 4, and we could get 1.25, which is 25 divided by 20. And remember, we can call this calculate function as many times as we want. So down here, we could call it with completely different numbers in a completely different mode, and we could do the same thing here. Now, if we go ahead and play all these different results because we've called our calculate function with all of our different modes multiple different times. Now, finally, let me show you how to return values. If this video has been helpful so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a couple seconds to destroy that like button. It lets YouTube know that this video is helpful and they'll push it out to other people. Thank you so much. Let's say you didn't just want to print the number one plus the number two. Let's say instead you wanted to save the answer as a variable. Well, what we could do is use returns, and instead of saying print, we could just say return. Return number one plus number two. Now in mode two, being our subtraction mode, we can just return number one minus number two. Then in mode three, our multiplication mode, well, let's just return number one times number two. And finally, in our division mode, let's go ahead and return number one and number two. Now if we run it, you shouldn't see anything in the output, and that's because we've returned a value, but we're not doing anything with it. Now how do we get that returned value? Well, we create a variable, let's say local calculated one equals to, and then we set it equal to our calling function. Okay, so we're calling that calculate function, and the return is basically sending a message back to wherever we called it from. So we're just saying this new variable calculated one, we want to set it equal to whatever we got returned from this calculate function. Now let's do the same for the other times we called the function. Local calculated two equals to this new calculate function and local calculated three equals to this new calculated function. Now we could say print calculated one and we can actually add commas if we want to print all the different variables at once. So print calculated one, calculated two, and calculated three. Now if we run it, it'll print all of the answers, 1.25, 50, and 75,000. Now functions are super useful, but you're definitely going to want to know how to connect these functions to events. So if you want to learn how to do that, click the video on screen right now.